The Lord's people are the salt of the earth. The Lord's people are the salt of the earth, meaning they are the very glue and fabric that keep this world going. We all are similar at our core of core. Like the Lord says that no one, no man can boast. God says this. There is no one person that God looks at that is deserving of heaven. If it wasn't for the sacrifice of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given a sacrifice of his holy life on the cross, we wouldn't have none of us would have access to heaven. It would have been cut off at people like Moses and uh, David. You know, it would have been heaven. Access would have been cut off. But God saw fit to give us a new covenant, which uh, we are living in today through uh, the incarnation of his son. And, I, you know, and, and that's the greatest gift that anyone has done for anyone on earth. That's the most selfless gift. Jesus Christ gave his life for people who hated him. Like some people won't even get a life for people that they love. Some people won't give their life for their family members. Some people are so when when it come down to it, if it really come down to it, that it's hard of hearts and the rubber hit the road. If a person had a gun to their head, they would sell out their own family members to save themselves. Yes, that's what would happen. Don't let your people fool you. And don't let people fool you just because they're in your face smiling and doing all this. God says in the Bible, in the good book, that there are going to be many people saying, Lord, Lord, you know, I did many works in your name. And God going to be like, man, I, you ain't never, I didn't never know you. You didn't know who I was. You didn't have a personal relationship with me. And then I know your heart. I know you never cared about me. I know you never would have done anything for me. You know, if it came down to it, I just never tested you because I knew what you would have done. You know, and that's the law say, he, you know, he's not going to test us to the capacity to where we can't take it, where he's going to destroy us. The law doesn't do that, you know, but for these people, some people, God doesn't never even he doesn't even go any further because these people won't go any further in their walk. So he doesn't push them to make them uncomfortable. And that's, you know, God doesn't believe in that. But there is no man, no great man on this earth that can boast. Not even myself. You know, I have, I depend on nothing but the grace and the love and the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, our living God. You understand? His sacrifice and the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is what guides me, and the Holy Spirit is what allows me to give me the strength. It gives me the strength to be able to resist temptation. The temptations of the flesh, we all have it. You understand? But the Holy Spirit allows me to resist. The Holy Spirit also directs me in truth and allow and teaches me. The Holy Spirit teaches, it's a teacher. So that's the standard that I hold to. If I know if I'm doing wrong because I look to that standard, if I'm doing somebody wrong, that's why, you know, the Lord says when two people are talking to believers, God is in the midst. That's why there's no tensions there. Sometimes you be around people, man, the tension be so thick. You can it's an unseen tension, but it's thick. You could feel it. You could cut it with a knife. You be around people, man. You just have an attitude and you just be like that. And it increases. And when you around them, the longer you around them, the more the danger increase, the more the attitude increase. Y'all can't be around each other without fighting or, or, or bickering. That's because the Holy Spirit ain't in the middle. God isn't in the middle of that. Nobody has the Holy Spirit upon them. You know, there's many unseen uses for the uh, for for the Holy Spirit that keeps this earth together. And people just, you know, they don't see that. They don't realize that while they are too busy in their everyday lives. They don't realize that if it were, if God took his hand and the Holy Spirit away from the earth, it would destroy itself. We would start destroying ourselves because the people, the believers are the glue, the selfless people on the earth. These people, our mandate as Christians is to be selfless. This is what the religion, the religion teaches. That's why when you have people persecuting Christians falsely today, you know, under the guise of it being dangerous, that's, that's why we have to fight against that because that's a lie. There's nothing dangerous about Christianity. Christianity teaches selflessness, self-love, self-care, self-awareness, and it teaches you to uh, 
treat your neighbor as you want to be treated. If you love yourself and doing maintenance on yourself and your governor is God, you're governing yourself, which is the only like the ma the ultimate governor, because you can't people can't the, the government can't police people 24 seven. The country is in chaos right now. Because we and look how far but we've fallen from God. The country is in chaos because we've abandoned the most high. This has been written. And the further and further A B gets B gets to C. The further and further we pull from the Lord and allow these things show pretty much reveal our uh true nature to God, reveal the heart, the wicked nature um to the Lord, that how we've abandoned him, how a lot of people have abandoned God, don't want to have nothing to do with God. Then more and more terrible things is going to happen on the earth. More and more chaos will ensue on the earth. You're going to have people harming people and they don't know why. You understand? It's going to be more of that. And the reason why is because God's in the midst. No, not God's not in the midst of them. He's not in between them. There's no understanding, no unity. The Like the unimind is not um, there in people anymore. You know, it's only in believers it's in the believers and the believers have, they have to continue to uh, let their light shine and use their talent, speak the word, you know, recruit. We have to recruit more. We have to recruit more believers for the gospel. There's people out here who they, they don't understand the word. They need people. They need someone to come in and take them out of this, you know, convict them with the spirit, with the word and take them out of this world. And I mean, not to not uh, literally, but I mean, pluck them and get them out of this worldly mindset, because soon as you give a person a second to think out of this matrix, you take them out of the matrix for a second, they'll wake up. Now, some people want to go right back in that matrix, because what you see when you take it out immediately, it can be jarring. You know, they're spiritual beings. We have spiritual warfare. There's Christians who in their life right now and they walk with God fighting against powerful demons, fighting against powerful spirits and uh, principalities of the air. This is written in the Bible. You understand Jesus Christ, when he came and he saw those men in the cemetery who were possessed by demons, there were nobody. They These were strong men in those times. Like those men had supernatural gifts and powers from the devil himself. The devil can give you gifts. You know, these men, but these men were, these were more in the times there were more, the spirit was more on the earth. Those men were so powerful that other men of authority didn't even want to go there. They just left them to their own devices. But Jesus Christ came down there, saw those men possessed, and what he did was just bang. He was Jesus Christ didn't curl, man. He didn't he didn't curl powerful. Like, well, those men could have been eight, the men could have been seven feet tall, you know, big dudes. Jesus Christ, my man, walked up to them, man, just released them demons up out of there, and them demons were scared. Like, what do we have to do with what you got to do with us, man? Why you coming to us before our appointed time? You know, let us have our fun, man. Jesus was like, man, get y'all butt up out of here, man. And I'm paraphrasing. But he basically was like, man, get out of these men and go into, you know, and he sent them into pigs and those pigs ran into the um to the water and died, ran into the to the water and killed themselves, drowned themselves. That's how delirious, that's how horrible those demons were. And when, you know, and demons travel once they leave a host, they look for other hosts. So these things that we have to face as Christians, um, they're not, it's not easy. Christianity, you know, so we have to, we need teachers, we need spiritual leaders. And when we recruit, like I say, we have to, to, um, make sure that we spoon feed the brothers and sisters, the word in increments, because we don't want to scare them. We don't want, because like I said, even the Lord is terrible to and the ter the Lord is terrible and fearful to behold. You know, they say these things, but he's also a loving God. So you have these two natures of God. So we but you have to understand that. You know, and what I mean by terrible like that, like the Lord is no tyrant. The Lord is giving you free will to do whatever you want, to bad mouth and to do everything, to even go about serving Satan. He's giving you that. God's no tyrant, man. But what I mean by terrible, man, when he get, when, when God get fed up and it come time for him to step, you know, to stand up off the throne and start spanking and start exercising his will of judgment, 
Man, God knows your worst fears. Do you, you know it's been people, you know this. It's been people who've died in horrible manners. It's been people who've lived lives, you know what I'm saying? Where you just look at it and you'll be like in shock and awe. God says, I kill, I make alive. Nobody doing this but God. He has a will that will be done. That needs, it has to be done. I'm, I, me personally, I'm in alignment with that will. I'm not trying to play away games, man. I'm staying close. Like I'm grabbing, I'm darn near grabbing on God's ankle. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's how I'm trying to do it, you know, but I'm following Jesus Christ. And that's what the blueprint that God gave us to do, to follow Jesus, man, to be, to be as Jesus was like, we're not perfect. Like, you know, a lot of us are Jesus Christ never married, you know, never was with women. A lot of us men, and they said like, this has been said in the new Testament. A lot of men, he said, it's better to not marry, but he know that a lot of us are not going to be able to endure that, you know, to follow. And the reason why he said that is because, you know, that'll just um, that'll just be something to distract you from your purpose. If you're trying to go full in your walk with the Lord, when the Lord say you need to leave mother, child and all this and your wife and, and clean to me, like in order to do that, you know, you have to be walking in full. You have to be ready to leave this world behind at all cost. You know, not saying you don't love people. You love them at their fullest capacity. But, you know, you want them to come with you. You telling them, you know, I do love you. Come with me. You know, don't be lost here because what's going to happen is, dog, when this is over, you know, there's no being, there's not going to be any second chances. The Lord said that, you know, that he have a place that he created for Satan and his and the demons and the wicked people are going to go there. The people who following Satan, y'all going to go there. But see, he created the people, the place for them. You going to go there and be in eternal torment. You understand? It ain't going to be a party. So we trying to save you from that. A lot of people dying like this now. They're tortured now on earth. Hell starting for them on earth. We trying to save them now. But while you trying to pull them on the ship, they fighting you. you. You throw them a life raft, they fighting the life raft. And they just sinking. They're sinking further and further. And you're like, man, I'm trying to help you. You can attain the same knowledge and wisdom, the same blessing. Your name that I have. You can, Your name could be written in the book of life. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to, to sit here and act. it's not unattainable for you. You don't have to sit here and just follow the world just because, you know. And I know that a lot of things feel it feel good to do wickedness, man, sometimes. But you need to all of, all of us need to do a self-assessment sometime. Just really sit down and self-assess yourself and assess like the things that you're doing. Are you really doing anything for anyone? Are you really helping anyone and or that's not helping you? Are you really doing like, you know, are you really thinking about the future and future generations and helping them? Are you really thinking about what's going to happen? Like what imprint you're leaving on this earth and what's going to happen to you when you leave this earth? That energy that's in you, that eternal energy that we found doesn't die. What do you think is going to happen to that? Like, that's your true self. Yeah. A lot of us don't want to think about that. A lot of us don't do self-assessments. A lot of us just go about life pretty much feeler, feeling around, spadunkering in the dark. Well, I'm here to tell you that there's a better way. There's a better way to live. And there's a better way, a state of being. And there is a better way to, um, a better way to present yourself to the to the world and to the lord man you know also man people don't curl up they because they don't want to think about how they don't want to be convicted about how god sees them god is a holy being holy meaning he's not a backstabber he don't lie not a backbiter won't betray you god has never betrayed anyone that's why those who have betrayed the living God, they have eternal damnation to look forward to. But none of us, you know, can escape that fate without the living, without the Holy Spirit, the living God, Jesus Christ, man. None of us can escape that fate without giving our all of our faith and trust into Jesus Christ. We have to be baptized in the spirit. 
into the family of, of Christ. We have to be baptized into the family of God. You know, baptism is symbolic of just, you know, washing your sins away, cleaning yourself up to present yourself to your heavenly father. When you present yourself, it's like when you go somewhere, like if you, if for people who respect their mother and father, you're not going to go over their house if they having to get together or something. You're not going to come to their house clean. I mean, you're not going to come to their house all filthy, you know what I'm saying? Tracking mud in their crib, bringing a bunch of prostitutes, and you're not going to come in drunk. Tell me, yeah, baby. You know, see, you try to show them just a little bit of respect, but you don't want to show that to the most high. See, that's why I said, man, us as the believers... We have to just keep letting our light shine and turning the heat up, recruiting, keeping the word out there because we are the salt of the earth. you only, you know, when people are born, you born into this earth with only your instincts. But when some people, as soon as you get your cognitive, um, soon as you get your bit your cognitive your full cognitive abilities and i'm talking about just as a little kid some of us sense that there's something wrong here babies can their instincts are even very strong to sense wickedness and and bad spirits and people and when they cry all the time that aggravates the spirit in these adult people and that's why you see some of these babies getting harmed and young children getting harmed because these young children are the light beacon straight from god that are shining on those demons and those demons can't take that those babies ain't even speaking they ain't even speaking formulating words but just they look alone is convicting the demon in these people that's how wicked some of these people are yes so, like I said, without God's people, man, uh, this whole world would just, it would have been gone by now. That book of saints that you have, that thick book, you need to go look it up. It's a thick book of saints. Martin Luther King, Martin Luther King Day just passed. He's one of them. He's in the book of saints. Martin Luther King did a lot for a lot of people, regardless of what you want to say about him. And he was a God-fearing man. He did that under the power of God, whatever you want to say. But look at how many things he did for a lot of people. What have you done before you judge that man? You understand? So that's what I'm saying. We are the salt of the earth. We are the lifeblood of the earth. So why the Lord said, don't dim your light. Let it shine. We need to continue to do that. With that being said, this is the Awakening Podcast. Peace and blessings to the brothers and sisters who are sealed in Christ. Y'all have a great, blessed, and wonderful day. I'm gone.